Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Samir Shukla, a technology enthusiast. Uh, I like to learn and uh, talk about new tools and technologies. And uh, today I'll be sharing my experience um, uh, that I had uh, while dealing with integration testing in my application and how, how I end up using test containers. So in any cloud native microservices architecture, as we can see that there are several downstream dependencies and the architecture can be polyglotic where um, the architecture have more than one database in, in the system. We have to support RDBMS or as well as NoSQL. This kind of architecture provides a couple of problems for the developers. Uh, two main one of them are uh, running this infrastructure on the local and the second one is um, uh, writing the efficient integration test cases. The first problem of running the infrastructure on local can, be, can still be solved when we use Docker Compose. That problem can still be solvable. But uh, when we write integration test cases, with this kind of an architecture, it is a little bit difficult to achieve that. So like why integration test cases are important? When we write J units in our application, um, those are written basically just to test the business logic. And we are, un we are unable to test the external dependencies in the system. So if we have to test, say, uh, in our application, we have Kafka or Redis, what we do generally is we, we mock the entire pipeline and we will test the business logic. But we mock the dependencies of uh, Kafka and Cassandra. But issue uh, that comes with that kind of an, uh, J unit is that we are not very confident in the test cases that we have written. Because uh, consider a scenario that uh, uh, we have to publish the event to Kafka only once the database call is successful. These kind of uh, uh, scenarios we were unable to test only with the help of J units. So to, to handle such situation, we have to write integration test cases in our application. The common problems that we deal with the um, writing integration test cases is, uh, especially the architecture that I have shared, is setting up the dependencies. Uh, it's, it's difficult to uh, spin up the entire infrastructure on your local machine because we have several downstream dependencies and as I mentioned, the architecture can be polyglotic. So if, we, if the uh, setup is uh, difficult, that can uh, force us to think about a, an alternative. That alternative is to uh, point our application to the real infrastructure. When we point our um, uh, application to the real infrastructure, it can have a couple of problems there as well. Uh, the problem that I have faced in my experience is that we used to have a CI environment. And that CI environment is used by almost uh, every team in the company. So the test cases are fragile. Someone can come and delete the table or the brokers were down. So more often than not, our test cases were, uh, were quite freaky. So we were unable to, like our CI CD pipelines were uh, failed most of the time. This problem can force developers to think about another alternative. That alternative would be to use in-memory databases or use some embedded uh, tools like embedded Kafka or embedded Cassandra if we are using. The problem that comes with the uh, in-memory databases or um, these uh, uh, embedded or uh, uh, simulated tools is that we may miss certain feature. For example, if we are using specific function of any database, that can be missing when we are using in-memory databases or any specific feature of a message broker, they, they might be missing if we are using those embedded uh, uh, tools. If suppose we are unable to solve these problems, the other two problems that, that we still face is the data management. Because when we used to run the integration test cases parallelly, we need a proper set of data. Those problems, like we still have to manage those, um, that data, the consistent data in the environment. And the, another problem is the resource management. We have to ensure that the, the infrastructure is up and, in, and we are also responsible for bringing down that infrastructure. To achieve that, we have to write the code that we still have to maintain. That's where the test containers comes into the picture. So it's a testing framework, a library, that helps us in writing the test cases with the real dependencies. And these dependencies are uh, available to us in the temporary Docker containers. Test containers 
provides an easy to use API. That API helps us in basically uh, bringing up the temporary Docker containers, bringing do them down and helps us in uh, communicating with those real dependencies. So we don't have to rely on uh, you know, segregating our test cases that we have to write J units or integration test cases. Any test case that we will write will talk to these real dependencies, whether it's J unit or integration test cases. The biggest advantage of using uh, test containers is that we don't have to deal with uh, bringing up the containers or bringing them down. All these throwaway instances are managed by the test containers itself. And uh, it helps us in achieving the realistic testing, as I mentioned, the problem with the J units. Environment remains consistent. The biggest advantage is the easier setup. So if you see this code, Test Containers API provides certain, um, you know, um, it has, it supports almost every software that is available. Like Post, if you are, if you are using Postgres in our application, it has Postgres container, Redis containers, Kafka containers. All we have to do is we just have to use them. Spinning up the Docker containers will be taken care by Test Containers itself. And the version problem. This is the most important problem. So. As I mentioned, that we, if we are using any in-memory database or um, simulated systems, we may miss certain important feature. With test containers, the biggest advantage is if we are using a specific version of Postgres in production, we can use the same version with our test containers. We don't have to, I mean, the version remains the same for whatever tools we are using in our microservices architecture. This is the biggest advantage in my opinion because um, Sometimes when, we, when you write J units, although it may green, it may, it may say that everything is correct, but we have to still test the dependencies. So if you see this, uh, this diagram, what it says is that uh, there is a service, which I am calling as my service, test containers is an API, which is responsible for spinning up these three test containers, as I mentioned, like for Kafka, it has Kafka container, for Redis, it has Redis container. Now, benefits. Some of the benefits I have already told, but I would like to talk about three most important benefits over here. The dynamic configuration. When we write Docker Compose, right, we have to somehow specify what kind of, on what port a certain system will work on or what kind of machine we are using. Test containers takes care of the dynamic configuration on its own. It dynamically allocates the IP. It dynamically in allocates the port as well. So we don't have to deal with all of them. All we do is just spin up the API and um, containers will be given to us. Test containers, like the test cases which we will write using test containers can be the part of CI-CD pipelines as well. On local, we can have a Docker daemon, but if we are running a CI-CD, it can connect to the uh, Docker which is running on the remote host as well. So we don't have to configure anything manually. The API provides certain functions to connect to the, like, I will show you with a code. So if you see here, the connection URL or host API, these kind of API, like these kind of functions will make sure that our test cases remain consistent in every environment, whether it is local or the part of the CI CD. And support for various technologies. So if you see the page over here, test containers has support for almost every component. If we talk about database, it has support of Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, NoSQL, if we talk about, it has support for MongoDB, Cassandra. So it is supporting almost every software that is available. Yeah. And um, support for these three advantages will help developer in reduced development time. All we have to do is we don't have to segregate the test cases. What we can do is we can simply write our test cases and test the entire pipeline without mocking any external dependencies. And the test containers workflow. It is a simple three-step process. First, we have to start the containers. Second, run the test, clean up the containers. For starting the containers, Test Container API provides certain functions like start for uh, for uh, removing the, for cleaning up the containers, it has functions for like stop. 
all we have to do is we just have to focus on our test cases and just provide the configuration at the time of startup. So uh, the, those throw away, uh, throw away instances will be start on our machine and we can simply point our test cases to those instances. So it's a very simple setup. We, there is not many complex things are going on behind the scene. All we have to do is whatever configuration we have done for our application to talk to database, we simply have to point that uh, or we can inject dynamically that configuration for pointing our application to the test containers rather than having any complex mechanism for that. So for this demo, um, for today's demo, I mean, I have created a very simple API uh, using fast API. It's a RESTful service. It has three operations, um, post, get, and delete. I'm calling it as a user service. The first operation, which is post, what it will do is when we create a user, the user will be created in the database. And similarly, at the same time, the, the same information will be stored in the Redis cache. When we get, when we try to get the user, first it will see whether the user exists in the Redis cache or not. If it exists over there, it returns the user. Otherwise, it will go to the database and fetch the same information. The, the intent here is to, to showcase how we can use multiple test containers within our application. So this is a simple API that I have created. And uh, I'll just try to create a user here. So we can see the user has been created. The user is retrieved. And it's gone. So these three op operations we are going to test or we are going to test it using our integration which is written using test containers. So as I mentioned that it's a three step process. The starting up the containers, executing the tests and um, removing those instances. Test containers API has support for every component as I mentioned. So we are going to import them I'm using some specific versions of those libraries, like uh, Postgres, Redis. We can specify whatever version we are using in production. We are going to start the containers. And uh, through this block of code, I'm trying to explain how we can point our application to the test containers. And these are the simple integration test cases. So these three test cases were successful. But I, I would also like to showcase how these um, containers are created for us. If I go over here, we can see that there are no um, Docker containers are running as of now. I will just pause the test uh, for a few seconds just to showcase that um, Test containers is creating those throwable ins away instances for us. So you can see here, we have two containers running, the Redis and the Postgres. Once the execution of these tests are over, as we can see it is completed, these instances are removed for us. So that's how, in a nutshell, the test container works. And if you see here, uh, in these functions, I have written a very basic test case. I have not tried to mock the application. I have not tried to mock uh, anything over there. I'm simply calling the services that I have written or the, or the functions that I have written to talk to the database or talk to, or talk to the uh, Redis over there. This, um, the last piece is, as I mentioned, that uh, test container has support for um, almost every container, every, every tool that is available. Uh, we can utilize them and uh, some of them which are missing over there, like Snowflake or any other component, that we can always request to the test container folks. And they can provide us with a certain solution. One of them is using the generic container option. If we don't have any component available upfront, test container has support for generic container. What it does is, it will allow us to inject the dependencies into the generic container. That support 
is pretty much alive. You can talk to them, and they are very responsive. So uh, that's all for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, okay, so some of the questions that we have out here in Slido. Uh, can you please reiterate why test containers are better than Docker Compose with regular integration testing? Yes. Because of the dynamic configuration. When we create Docker Compose, we have to make sure that there are no port conflicts. And we also have to ensure that the test contain that uh, the test that we are running on local should be uh, the part of the CI CD as well. So to avoid all those conflicts, we should always use test containers rather than Docker Compose. Right. And get right up on that mic, by the way. If you want to grab it, you yeah. can take it with you. Yeah. Oh, we have a second one. There we go. Thanks. Yeah, hold it close to your mouth when you talk, too. <laughs> Uh, next one. Uh, how do you handle persistent data dependencies, like databases that contain data where the test uh, may have a temporal component, meaning the test data expires? Yes. So uh, uh, test container API, I have very uh, shown you a very basic uh, demo over here. The API has support of uh, those, um, uh, those uh, uh, features as well. So you can use, uh, please go to the test containers forum and you can find all those uh, functions over there. It has support to all, all of them. All right. Uh, do you see test containers as a complete replacement for end-to-end -end tests? Yes, I can see that. Wow. Because uh, because of the support of various software that I, I, I have provided that is available, plus it's very easy to use. Okay. Um, what benefits does it offer when we work with multiple services? For example, in a microservice setup when writing integration tests? So as I showcase you in my demo that... Um, several downstream dependencies can be used directly. So you don't have to uh, configure anything. All you have to do is just focus on starting up those dependencies and point your test cases to them. Nice. I'm going to keep hitting you with questions here because we got a lot of good ones. Um, was it easy for your uh, organization to adopt test containers? Did it help lower your operational costs or speed up the development lifecycle? Yes, I can talk about two of them. It has certainly speed up uh, the... Um, like, speed up the development time. Certainly, I have seen that because we were focusing com on completely on writing the integration test cases. We are not mocking several dependencies over there. And yes, uh, our organization has completely adopted test containers. OK. Um, this question's interestingly phrased, but we can still automate. Oh, sorry. Josh is moderating back there and has moved questions around on me. Uh, if the API that your code is dependent on is in a different repo and is changing upstream, what's the best practice for when and how to update your containers? Can you please come again? Yeah. So <laughs> if the API that your code is dependent on is in a different repo and it's changing upstream, so they're changing independently of you, what's the best practice for keeping those containers updated? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the repo, are, is this repo is dependent on any other? I mean, there are integration test cases in this repo also, or it is completely a repo that I'm using for my development purposes? So I'm going to interpret the question and let me know if I interpreted it incorrectly, uh, Lee, wherever you are in the room. Um, let's say one team is maintaining one service out of one repository, and your team is another service yeah. that's a dependent, dependency, but it's independent. Right. So if one team is writing a service and we are utilizing that service, we can we can still use them with the help of generic container. We don't have to, uh, we are not completely tightly coupled with them. Since if suppose two services are interacting, service A is developed by team A, service B is developed by team B. So we can very well interact with them with the help of generic containers. It is not tightly coupled with it. Okay, last question. Uh, have you seen more confidence of uh, contribution from your junior engineers with this type of stuff? Yes, because it's pretty easy to achieve. We, they don't have to write a lot of complex code. As I mentioned, if you are writing a service layer, if you have a persistence layer, all they have to do is just simply invoke them. So it's very easy for the junior engineers to work with test containers rather than writing the separate J units. Nice. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question for myself. Yeah. On a scale of zero to Bucky here, how excited are you about test containers? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm going to interpret that as Bucky. Yeah, Thank Bucky. you so much, Samir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.